spilling the tea <laughs> on Celebrating Descent 2022. Mm. So, so tell people who don't know, me and Susanna spoke at this event uh, organized by week. Expos last week, um, organized by ex-Muslims of um, the Castle of Ex-Muslims of Britain and a whole bunch and of other Free Thought Lebanon. Free Thought Lebanon. And which Mariam Ramazi and yeah, Richard Dawkins was speaking at that event. Me and Susanna had our own panels, and it was a roller coaster, right? So what were it was a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're gonna review some of these videos with you guys. We have to first organize the files, upload them, and I think we're gonna bring a guest on. We're gonna there was like a lot of drama. There was a lot of um, Susanna was called a ter terrorist sympathizer. In front of everybody, <laughs> in front of Dawkins. <laughs> so, how does it feel to be a terrorist sympathizer, Susanna? <laughs> Apparently, you guys, I support the Taliban. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Do you saying finally? I have been waiting for this. So, Armin, last time we had the Q and A, you were saying maybe for the Q and A this come week we should do a deep dive into celebrating descent instead of our normal format what yeah yeah can we yeah let's do that this is our channel let's do a deep dive with it okay we can have to kind of have the files uploaded somewhere for us to go through they are uploaded they're on onedrive yeah, like okay on youtube or something onedrive is like this is like segments of it it's okay we'll figure it out I'll oh talk okay i see what you mean yeah yeah um but, yeah. I don't even know Talk, what to get yeah. into. There were so many moments. Um, I think, okay, so let's just start talk about what Armin is referring to. So I was on the first panel of the entire conference, and we can do a dissection of my panel because I have my own thoughts and feelings about it. I'm just extremely self-critical, so I think I it was um, it was like my living nightmare. But everyone yeah. else is like, you're fine. <laughs> I thought she did great. She she thinks she didn't do good. I think she was one of the best speakers, but she doesn't think so. I think originally you got off to a rocky started, start. <laughs> rocky, I think you started rocky. I think you were nervous. I think like you were caught off guard with uh, with the moderator's questions and stuff. But then eventually you got you got back on it, and I think you had some really really interesting uh, nuanced points. And then you were caught off guard again in the middle of it, and then you had to adjust to that. But then you got back on it again. It was I think it did, for your first panel, I think it was really good. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So yeah. me and Jimmy Bangash were speaking on the same panel. And then I, he said some things to me on the panel in front of everyone that nearly made me disassociate with social panic. <laughs> but apparently no one else can tell <laughs> as I'm spinning into the ether. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we should probably do a full dissection of that. But like now, Every, I, and I was furious at Jimmy for like all the rest of the conference. But then when I needed help, like legitimately needed actual help, he was there for me. So we're all good. <laughs> um, I was like, you actually saved my skin. So I, I forgive everything. Um, and then why? So what Armin is talking about me being a Terry sympathizer is because later we had a panel where... Um, there were a bunch of women talking about hijab and forced hijab and free being a free woman in Islamic societies, all this stuff. And there was a woman from Afghanistan there. And many of them were talking about Afghanistan. And um, I stood up and they have a QA and a at the end of every panel. And I stood up and asked a question. And I can't remember how I phrased it, but I basically said, like, the free world, quote unquote, is, oh, no, I'm is You're putting right. sanctions on the Taliban for the sake of women's rights, like among many other things, and women's rights to education and other protections for women. As we do this, like 97% of Afghanis are, are food insecure. Women are starving. They are forced to sell their children. They are forced into child marriage. They're forced to sell their kidneys. And I basically asked the question, are we harming women in our attempt to fight for their rights or whatever? And 
this woman from Afghanistan stands up in the audience to respond and ask a question and she starts railing at me. And it actually took me a second to realize that she was railing at me. And she, was, she started she looking like, at you. Wait, why can't I hear you right now? Just a second. Guys, it was so imagine, imagine a victim, a victim of this whole mess in Afghanistan, like a woman who is actually suffering under the hands of Taliban, calling you out, okay, as somebody who is taking the side of her oppressors, okay, simply because Susanna was asking a question on, I mean, it's a legitimate question. And I think like a lot of, ah, if, I don't know if I should say this, I could get into a lot of trouble by saying this, right? But the, Susanna's question, well, I'll ask Susanna when she's back whether I could ask, I could say this or not. Oh, you can hear I'm me? back. Well, Susanna's question is very, it's a good one, okay? Susanna's question is like, we have um, a lot of Afghani women. Like, what we pay attention to, uh, the secular world, the liberal world, pays attention to Afghani women in the major cities who were being educated, who are had now because had access to a better life right now, they had jobs, they were becoming professionals. And Afghanistan was like, at least when it comes to women rights, was now moving ahead, moving ahead of Iran, right? Um, was becoming, women were very present and becoming very educated in Afghanistan. And all of that because of the Taliban has been taken away from them. Their rights, their freedom, their right to a career, their right to freedom, their right to autonomy, to control over their lives, all of that is being taken away from them. So that's the cost, right? However, on the other hand, there are a lot of other women uh, in Afghanistan that are suffering from starvation, okay? Because of the current, because of many things, including ta Taliban's mismanagement, okay? Um, the pandemic, um, Ukraine war, but also, also the sanctions on Afghanistan and the fact that a lot of, um, assets but, uh, of Afghanistan have been frozen and also because of uh, the uh, Taliban has not been recognized. Um, I mean, we're not saying they should or shouldn't be, but this is a discussion, right? So it's a question. The question is like, should we consider those women? Like, it's not just like the, I don't know, uh, the Kabul, central Kabul academic woman in Afghanistan you should be worried about. Like not recognizing the Taliban is could be leading to a lot more suffering. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. It's a good question to ask. But even questioning that to maybe like, maybe we should recognize the Taliban for the sake of these other women, okay? Um, and I honestly, I, this might be controversial to say, Susanna, right? Because you should be for Afghani women always, all the time. Uh, but I think some of these Afghani women who are like thinking everything about, is about education, and not being covered up, they are actually betraying other Afghani women who want to have food, who want to make sure that their bombs are not being dropped on their heads. Okay. Who don't want so, to sell their children, or sell their own organs. Yeah. I mean, you can't ignore those other women. Okay. They, they are women as well. They are all Afghani women as well. And I think it was very unfair. All Afghans, they, really. Yeah, I'll ask you, but I'm saying if you want to focus, if you're only focusing on women, well, these are women. I'm not just like, uh, they're men too, but I mean, they have women as the ones that are not, they're, they're suffering from poverty because of these policies. They have women among them as well. I, I mean, I've been told, I don't know. I think half of them are women. Okay. So, <laughs> so what, what you seem frustrated. What is it? Oh, no, no, I'm not frustrated. No. I'm just like remembering. <laughs> yeah. No, but then she's like, then they're pointing at Susanna and like, you don't need to speak for Afghani women. The Afghan, they, and they're accusing her and saying like the Afghani women who are risking their lives, like they rather, she, she's claiming that they would rather go hungry. I'm like, fuck you. All of them? Who are you? Like, you think because you are an Afghani woman, you get to speak on behalf of all of Afghani women? They're all like you you're saying, like, look at go ask. She says, go ask Afghani woman. I'm like, no, you go ask Afghani woman because you're you haven't you seem to not understand that some of them want, don't want this. Yes, there are one some of them that are risking their lives that would rather die than live under the Taliban, but you can't use those as examples and then 
attributed to all of Afghani women. So even though you are an Afghani woman, you shouldn't tell Susanna. Susanna actually has a more realistic perspective of our Afghani woman than you do. She shouldn't be talking to Afghani women. You should go back to uh, talk to Afghani women. The entirety of Afghanistan is not just a woman in Kabul or other major cities that got a taste of Western edu Western lifestyle or education or sub secularism. That's not the entirety of Afghanis. You are even though you're from Afghanistan, you're living in a bubble. You're living in your own centralized liberal bubble in Kabul or somewhere else that you think this is the entirety of the perspective of Af Afghani woman. Susanna's perspective, she's not a terrorist sympathizer. She's an Afghani woman, an Afghani per people sympathizer. You seem to not understand that. You just actually, you are actually very selfish. You are a selfish one. You are thinking that your priorities is everyone else's priorities. Again, it is a tragedy that Afghani women can't get educated right now. It is a tragedy that they get, don't get to choose their what they wear, okay? But there are also other things that we have to take into account. And even, even if it's worth the cost, even if you think all this mass poverty that is Afghanistan is going to be inflicted by, it's worth the cost because liberal that's the cost of liberalism, this is a worthy discussion to have. This is a worthy discussion to have to see whether it's worth the cost. Just because somebody is asking that doesn't mean that they're taking the side of Taliban. It's such a pathetic, brain dead um, pushback. Like, and it's so hard because you are asking a challenging. You are asking the only good question, okay? And you, if have, someone imagine, asked me that question, to be fair, I wouldn't know how to respond. Yeah, but then imagine being in Susanna's position. Somebody in the audience from Afghanistan wearing traditional Afghan clothes. Okay, and crying about their situation. I'm pointing out Susanna. Basically saying, telling, I can't remember exactly what she said, but she was basically expressing like, I'm so disgusted to see like these women from America saying this, like betraying us like this. And I was like, no. whoa, whoa. And that's when I realized that she was railing against me and everyone in the audience was like, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. my God, what just happened? This woman for America understands what, the plight of Afghani woman more than that Afghani woman herself, even though she might have like been oppressed by Taliban and she's seen the worst. She said she, she, Susanna understands the situation more than her, even though you're wearing traditional Afghan costume and you come from that, you, you've been oppressed by Taliban. I'm, I'm sorry. All that oppression hasn't made, hasn't actually made you very smart. Okay. Oh, Jesus you, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest here. Gets us in trouble. I, I, no, no, I'm like, you don't have the right perspective. You are, you're very narrow minded. You look at your own personal experience and you try to come up with a collective like solution to everything, which is like, yeah, brain dead. Yeah. Forever mm -hmm. Stormy is saying, I think for Afghan women, this is too raw in, in anything, no matter how nuanced that gives the Taliban regime any concession is seen as sacrilege. And that's what I can appreciate. Like, I actually have a lot of empathy for her. Because and I, there was also, frankly, like some language barrier. And so, and I'm asking like an extremely difficult question that is morally very difficult and also just policy-wise very difficult. And so I have a lot of empathy for how emotionally that would make someone feel. I, I so I, I'm, I don't have anything against her personally or anything. Um, and then after she said that, I like took the mic and i was like i just want to say like uh fuck the taliban <laughs> like <laughs> like i don't yeah i think i was misunderstood um i think it's really it's really difficult like if i was in the position of an afghan woman and i had to make the choice and it's a brutal choice between feeding my family and selling one of my daughters into a child marriage and my right to education, I would throw away my right to education in a heartbeat. Yeah. I would and do there... anything to protect my children from that. Anything. Hmm. And and there are exa counter examples. There are examples of people who would rather give up everything for liberty, but you can't act like if that's you, say that's me. Don't say that's the entirety of Afghani woman. Don't act like you because you are one of those Afghani women. That means that that's everyone's priority. Like even here, even in our live chat, again, starting with the trust me. Again, people, when somebody says trust me. No, no, no. This person's being sarcastic. 
Okay. Well, good. Then don't, don't trust it. How do you know that? How can you tell? Because they were like based on what they were saying earlier. Because Cosmic Heathen is saying she used the trust me, bro card. Trust me, bro. Afghan woman, we better starve themselves than wearing burqa all the time. Okay, good. So good thing because I was gonna I was gonna unleash hell <laughs> upon you. Like I was ready. Good thing Susanna is here because I was about to <laughs> You have no idea. I <laughs> Much saw like how my... hell was unleashed unleashed upon me based on understanding. Cosmic Heathen mm. was about to get it. <laughs> I saw red. When I saw this comment, I'm like, here's a prime example of what I'm talking about right here. But guys, make sure if you're being sarcastic, please put it like a symbol or something. It tongues out like a, or a slash S or something. How am I supposed to know that it's sarcastic? So Cosmic Heathen is saying, trust me, Afghan women would better start uh, would." Better start themselves than wearing a burqa all the time. But okay, all the time. But that was the point that the person on the panelist made. She 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 came to she actually like, did say that. You know, you you're being sarcastic. This is exactly what she said. Like we will show you the clips. Like she was telling Susanna, like no, you don't understand. Go ask Afghan woman. They would rather die. They would rather die dead. than yes. I'm like no, you don't understand. You're Afghani, but you don't understand. Because they don't rather starve. They will put the burqa on if that means that they will not have to starve. If you rather die, that doesn't mean they rather die. Yeah, it was wild. I know. And then it, it, at first I was like really uncomfortable and I have severe social anxiety. So like I cannot tell you how badly everything in my body was physically telling me that I need to disappear. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's cosmic in the same thanks thanks susie for saving me um and then afterwards i was like oh wait no this was like not my fault and a lot of people came up to me and were like i actually agree with your point like i don't think what we're doing is right or um or <laughs> and then it became a joke i was like are you are you sure you want to be seen with a terror sympathizer right now <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty wild. Is there any other? Do we want to talk about the drama you started on your panel, Armin? Yeah, I, I I made like half the audience boo me. Actually, I think I don't know. Was it half the audience? But I had to like I, I, as soon as I got the mic and said, people realize what I'm gonna say. There was like a wave of negative energy coming at me from that. But on your face, on your face, you were like this. You're like, ooh, I know. Don't do it, Armin. And he was like, I'm gonna do it. Like. <laughs> In your okay. face, you can see how you're like, oh, my God. oh yeah. <laughs> I thought I, oh my God. Should we give the context? Go ahead. So, I mean, we all, I mean, yeah. I don't know how much we want. We might want to save some juicy stuff for our Q&A. Or maybe on the Q&A, yeah. we can do some choice, like, clip viewing. And we can actually watch it back. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But give them some... Uh, so basically, Armin was on a panel with a, a bunch of people, and they were talking about God and morality and all this stuff. And it was like a bunch of men, lovely people, and then one woman whose name is a uh, journalist, Khadija Khan. And um, then, so it was the Q and A portion, and all of a sudden, this person stands up in the audience who happens to actually be another speaker, and says i just want I'm, I'm paraphrasing like i just want to say that even in the secular movement like the patriarchy is still alive and you're not letting her talk at all and this is like male dominance and all this stuff and everyone in the audience like at least where i was sitting because we're in the front row we were looking at each other we're like what the fuck? <laughs> patriarchy what and yeah. then it just and then it just derails everything derails <laughs> Wait, it didn't derail until we didn't it didn't derail because people other people were like completely submitting to this to this claim i mean i was waiting for the mic until it, nothing happened not until everyone. the mic got, well, you, yeah. okay, you tell it as you remember no so like she said it and then people just went with it and we're like yeah and like and nobody responded to that and i was just waiting for the mic so i could respond to that and then as soon as I got the mic and people realized that I'm going to push back on this patriarchy claim. No, no, it, no, it's, that, no, it's not just unleash. You were about to unload. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but the audience were like, and just like trying to make me not respond. I, I, I want to, I want to rewatch this video, but I a think there was a meme. Of, uh... <laughs> Yeah, but I think people were trying, the audience were trying to convince me to just let it go. Okay. Because this is a, 
very, very feminist audience. Okay. And yeah. they just realized they didn't think, I think like, I've never seen anybody like challenge this kind of narrative in these co conferences. And I didn't think, I thought like, there's never an expectation that anybody was going to challenge any a comment like this. Right. I thought like anytime somebody tells you like, oh, men should shut up or let the woman speak, or this is too much patriarchy. This is the signal to like, like, okay, let's like, let's just accept this and go like, let's not uh, rattle the cages or anything like that. So when they, when there was th this moment that people realized that I, this is what I'm going to respond to, there was like, they really, there was a major, I think there was an attempt by the audience to convince me to just let this go, let this go. And at that oh, moment, definitely. I connect Walid also, okay. Walid was the mod of our panel. And I think he could have decided to shut this down. And because if, because I was very, the entire time during the panel, you can see that I'm always looking at Walid because he's like the moderator. And I'm also like trying to get signals from him, whether it's okay for me to say something or continue or not. So he had the power to shut me down and he decided to not shut me down. Okay. He decided to let me go. <laughs> so he was like, do it, my son. You know? <laughs> okay. So, and I, the first thing I said is like, I responded to the booing and the, like all the, like the pushback. I was like, oh no, a man is going to be speaking about feminism. So, and I think in hindsight, people were like, like oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I think like that made things a lot worse. So, so, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm not gonna back down. I'm gonna double down. Oh my god, we should we should watch that clip, okay? And I basically compared their patriarchy claims to God because it's like a patriarchy of the gaps. Basically, everything they can is explained by patriarchy. All the problems are being explained by just like God is just filling the gap of things that we can't explain. The God did it. God did it. They're basically what they're doing is explaining everything with patriarchy. And I was very careful, very careful to mention that not all okay even though people are like oh this is you don't understand feminism i'm like i specifically said some feminists okay not all feminists right? but also i khadija herself on the panel who was the uh, woman on our panel she also said like this is not like this was she feels like we're she wasn't um, her right like wasn't taken her, her speaking time wasn't taken away from her guys like look go back and look at the video every single time she asked, she requested the mic even if sitting next to each other armin and Khadija i was sitting, sitting ne right next to her okay i there was a time before this claim of patriarchy was being made i really wanted to say something okay and she said give me can i have the mic and against my self-interest which is hard for me to do because i noticed that she hadn't been speaking for a while i was like i gave her the mic okay so and i don't do that usually okay i'm like ah oh, it's yeah. my turn so i like it was but after that they're telling like oh you don't let her speak they they claim that i took the mic away from her i like i specifically remember that it was the opposite i had the mic i wanted to say something to say something and she requested the mic and i gave it to her and i'm still being called like i'm we're taking speaking time away from her and it's a patriarchy like maybe i'm misremembering things maybe this is, maybe this is false memory so we will rewatch everything that happened and the pushback and what i said because yeah and we'll see what happens. But also, yeah, I, I'm not gonna go into more. We'll, we'll watch this together, and we'll see what happens. Oh my gosh, it was, it was, it was, it was delicious. And then, and then there was even more pushback, saying I need to say what real feminism is. And then Miriam said, "This is why we don't have too many men on a panel." And the thing is, it had nothing to do with there being too many men on the panel. There was supposed to be two other women on the panel, but they couldn't make it. So this isn't. A result of the underrepresentation of women. This is because the women who were supposed to be there dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have something to say. Well, never mind. I'm not going to say more because I could get in trouble. Um, I was going to say something. In else. general, we should also, when we do a full deep dive, um, we need to talk about the 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 turfy aspect of this conference. Wait, I don't know if turf people term. like to be called turf. Is that like an insulting term? They, they consider it a slur, but just for the sake of people more quickly understanding what kind of position I'm talking about, I use the term. 
what do what do what do they prefer to be called? I think I they know, would be radical feminists, real, maybe? No, real feminists. I think they would like to be Probably. called. Probably. Yeah, okay. I don't know. What do terrorists like to be called? We have to figure out. Because I don't want because I think most feminists in that conference were what other people call them turfs, right? So we want to make sure yeah. that we don't want to refer to them as turf if they hate being called turfs. I don't know. They did they do think it is a slur. Okay, so we should figure out we should say what some people refer to as turf. How about that? Okay. Yeah. 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 It's By the way, the easiest people way are to making, explain. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I, I I remember some um Jimmy was making fun of me for saying not all, okay? And I'm like Apparently, I need to say it even more because on this panel, even though when I said like not all feminists, this is how some people, some feminists take it this far, the pushback against me from the audience was that I don't understand how nuanced feminism is, and this is not fe what if I if I studied feminism, I would understand that they don't. What I'm saying is not you know feminism is a lot more complicated and nuanced than this. I was like, I did not even after I said this is not what all feminists say. Okay, there are specific people within feminism. So, so I it is justified for me to keep saying not all because it's apparently I should have said even more, not less. So there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Armin, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Besides the speakers and the panels and blah blah blah, um, what is your favorite memory from the conference? My favorite memory from the conference is how much, how many times I was name dropped on panels that I wasn't on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, but okay. So what, what was I going to say? Um, people are asking in the live chat, where, where are these videos? We will publish them. We got the permission from Mariam. We will publish them on a. Oh, we did? Public. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so we get you know, subscribe to this channel and notification. We will publish them all here, including the Q and A's where Susanna or I was involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think um, my favorite one. I have a lot of favorite memories from outside of the actual panels. I think one of my favorite memories is um, on the private dinner we had for speakers on Sunday. How <laughs> you. Uh, Viru Vids, Hara Sultan, and Sohail Ahmad had a, I'm calling it the great horniness debate. You guys had had a, a, a debate after a few drinks about women's horniness. It was hilarious. <laughs> you want to Armin came out as a strong defender of the yes. horniness of women. <laughs> You're welcome. Woman. It was so funny. <laughs> there were men arguing against your right to drip, and I was protecting them. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it... <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the right to. Like... They were just talking it's... about the I'm likelihood kidding. of, on average, across a population. <laughs> you know what? I could have taken. I could have taken an easy like. I could have done done them dirty, right? I could have like the fact that you think women can't get that horny, maybe has something to do with your mm. abilities. But I didn't mm. do that. I didn't do that. Mm. Um, okay, so uh, somebody, uh, Nob, I don't know who. I can't read the name. Is asking, can I ask what your email is so I can potentially send that to Bill Jensen? Bill Jensen is that Christian guy, right? Yeah, it's armit.navobi at gmail.com. Send that there. Send that to Send my email to him. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> what? Satya is saying, I want to watch that video. Give me the link. We have no We have no recording of that. There's no link right now. We will. We will is them. like, that was the topic of debate. What kind of men do you hang around? Oh, come on, man. It was, it was, it was fun. It was all in good fun. Susanna was there and she was having fun, even though I was she having didn't the time defend. of my life. This is why you need men because women don't defend women getting horny. Okay, they would just watch there and just like confirm what you're saying, but they don't get involved because of all the shame. Because that they have we to don't have through. the testosterone to do it. No, because you're ashamed. You're ashamed. You can't take the pressure. So I'm here defending you. You're welcome. This is why thank you need you, men. Thank you. Yes. Yes. This is why you need masculinity, okay? It's not oh all toxic. God. It's actually it's actually helpful. Long live the patriarchy. 
I was gonna say that in the panel when it's over. I, if I wanted to be a major ripple, once the whole panel is over, I would like long live the patriarchy. <laughs> what would happen if I said that? Would that be too much? <laughs> we need to be invited back, Armin. I'm I'm joking. This is a joke. This is a joke. This is a joke. <laughs> The white knight of horniness. Ah! <laughs> Armin Satya is saying Armin is mansplaining Susanna. Well, women need that. I don't know if you guys understand. <laughs> they they need it. Oh my gosh, we should also talk about this. Is why men make the best feminists disrespect. because women can defend themselves. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, in general, I think that the radical feminists at this conference were some of the most sexist people I've ever met. Yeah. Hashtag the right. right to drip. Hashtag the right to be horny. Thank you, Suha. Yes, thank we you. We gotta get these. We gotta get these hashtags running. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then. All right. Wait, wait, uh, Armin. I want to get a screenshot of us. Okay, so do a salute at the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues including judicial harassment and censorship Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.